Hello everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to study crystalline solids and their structure. So in this we are going to cover the basic definitions of crystalline solids and crystals then we'll move on to study the different kinds of lattices the brevi lattices and ultimately the seven crystal systems so let us start with some basic definitions so what is meant by the term crystalline this is a very commonly heard term so the solid materials they can be classified according to their arrangement so they are classified according to the periodicity of their arrangement rather okay so what is this arrangement that is the arrangement of atoms ions or molecules so a crystalline solid is one in which these species these atoms ions or molecules they are arranged in a repetitive manner they are arranged in a repeating or periodic array so that the arrangement repeats itself after a certain distance and this array should exist over large atomic distances so what is meant by this large atomic distances that is the long range order should exist in the periodicity long range order should exist okay so the atoms here they are strongly bonded to their nearest neighbors okay so examples of crystalline materials are metals ceramics and some polymers as well not all but some polymers do exist in crystalline form and for the materials that do not exhibit long range order the materials in which this long range order is absent they are termed as non crystalline or amorphous so they are termed as amorphous or simply non crystalline so now the next term is crystal structure what is meant by the crystal structure the manner in which the atoms are arranged in 3d space 
okay so the crystal structure can be cubic hexagonal orthorhombic rhombohedral anything there is a set number out of which it can take any of the crystal structure okay so there exists seven types of crystal structures sorry crystal systems okay they can be simple or complex now these species these atoms or ions or molecules they are considered as hard solid spheres they are considered as hard solid spheres with well defined diameter so this can be termed as atomic hard sphere model okay so wherever the atoms are considered as hard solid spheres that model shall be referred to as atomic hard sphere model now the next term is lattice what is a lattice lattice is an array of points in space such that each point has identical surroundings it is necessary to maintain identical surroundings for each point even if one of the point doesn't have surroundings similar to any other then that array cannot be termed as lattice no matter whatever point you look at the you should see always identical things so sometimes these lattice points coincide with the center of the atoms the indicate where the atoms sit now the next term is unit cell the smallest repetitive unit the smallest repeating unit is termed as the unit cell okay this unit when tiled in 3d will give us the entire structure when tiled across three dimensions can give us the entire crystal structure okay so unit cell choice has three major criteria so how do you make the choice of an unit cell so first is it should have the symmetry of the lattice so the unit cell should have the highest symmetry corresponding to the lattice so it is important that it has the highest symmetry of the lattice next is 
the size of the unit cell should be the smallest. It should have the smallest size. In the last, when nothing can decide, we choose unit cells by convention, simply by convention. Okay. So this is the choice of unit cell. Now, let us see in 2D. Suppose you have a square. This is your square and you subdivide it into half and then half and then diagonal. So this particular unit, this unit is being repeated in 2D to give the entire square. So this can be termed as the unit cell. We are not looking at the symmetries right now, just the smallest unit. Okay. This cannot be divided further to have a smaller shape. So this is the unit cell. Now let us move to lattices in some more detail. So we are going to study lattices now. Okay. So as defined, they are array of points in space such that each point has identical surroundings. So it is necessary to maintain identical surroundings. Okay, lattices always have translational periodicity. Because they are generated by translation along the different axes. So, this translation periodicity factor should always be taken into account for lattices. So, this, because of the translational periodicity, we can have lattices in 1D, 2D and 3D. So, 1D, 2D and 3D refers to arrangement in 1 dimension, arrangement in 2 dimension, arrangement in 3 dimensions. Now, these lattices are actually infinite. Now why they are infinite? It is necessary that they are infinite. Let us consider a 1D array. Suppose you have a set of points, these seven points. So now if you see this particular point has atom or a point, sorry, a point to its right as well as to its left. But this point doesn't have any point towards its left. It has points only towards its right. So when this point doesn't have surroundings that are identical to this. It doesn't have identical surroundings. So this cannot be termed as a lattice. So this is not a lattice. So for this to be considered as a lattice, this array should continue in infinity so that the points at the end always have some points on both the sides. Okay. So now let us look at the 1D lattices.
So as the name suggests, 1D lattices are an infinite array of points in one dimension that is along one axis only. So, uh, only in one special case can this infinite array be a finite one. That is, when these points lie on a circle. Suppose this is your circle and your points lie on this. So, these are your points. So, every point has identical surrounding and it has a finite number of points. So, this is a special case of 1D array where the lattice can be finite. Now, there is only one type of 1D lattice. Only one type of 1D lattice. Okay? And it can be described by a single lattice parameter. So, only one lattice parameter is required and that is A, lattice translation vector. So, if you have an infinite array of points, so this particular vector, this is your A vector and is the lattice translation vector. Okay, so in 1D, what all operations you can have? You can have symmetry operations. The different symmetry operations that exist are mirror. In 1D, mirror is reduced to a point. Then next is two-fold rotation. This is an axis but in 1D it is also reduced to a point. And the last is an inversion point. So suppose you have such a kind of motor. Okay, so you can have a mirror here. So this point acts as the mirror. Also, this acts as an axis of two-fold rotation. So this when rotated by 180 degrees lands here. So these are identical spaces. And also the same thing acts as an inversion center. Okay, other kind of symmetries do not exist in 1D. So, in 1D, we have two point groups. In 1D, we have only two point groups. They are mirror and a simple translation. So this implies we have two types of crystals in 1D. One having mirror symmetry and the other having the plane translational symmetry. Okay. Now let us move to 2D lattices. So, as the name suggests, this is an arrangement of 
points along the two dimensions. Okay, as two dimensions. The earlier one was one dimension. This is now two dimensions, and these points are infinite in both the directions. Infinite along both the dimensions. And here also the surroundings should be identical. Now, here we have five distinct type of 2D lattices. Now, these lattices, they are classified and named according to different things. So, they are classified on the basis of symmetry of the lattice. They are classified on the basis of the symmetry of the lattice. Whereas they are named according to the shape of the conventional unit cell. So, symmetry defines the classification and the shape of the conventional unit cell governs the name. Okay. So, always classification is made on the basis of the symmetry. So, let us have an infinite 2D array. So, practically we can only make a finite one. So, let us start with this small array of 2D points. This exists in so, this is infinite, infinite, infinite. Okay. Now, to define this, we need two basis vectors. This is A vector and this is B vector and an angle between them alpha. So, these A and B, this A and this B, they are the basis vectors or lattice translation vectors. They define the distances after which the points should be repeated along the two dimension. This generates the lattice. Okay. Now, how many lattice parameters are required? So, we require a total of three lattice parameters as defined. So, two of them are distances A and B while one is an angle between the two vectors. that is alpha okay so we require a total of three lattice parameters a lattice defines how to repeat along the dimensions how to repeat okay Now, let us see what are these five distinct types.
they are first is square second is rectangle third is centered rectangle fourth is 120 degree rhombus fifth is parallelogram okay so we have four unit cell shapes that are used for five lattices so we have four unit cell shapes that are used for five type of lattices okay now what are these lattices so let us start with them one by one first is a square lattice okay so let us begin with one so let us have an array of points So this is your array okay so we can see the basis vectors are this a vector b vector and here alpha equals to 90 degree and also this modulus of a and b are equal and alpha equals to 90 degrees so these are the lattice parameters or the relations between them that can be defined for a square lattice now a square this is the smallest unit cell so a square is the unit cell now let us see the symmetry operations for this unit cell we have four fold rotations on the vertices and at the center along with that we can have two fold rotations midway and mirrors one to the center and one diagonally okay so these are the symmetries and then these mirrors are also follow uh, the four fold rotations so the symmetries that exist here are rotation plus mirror so the point groups pertaining to a square lattice are 4 mm and simply 4 the least symmetry that it should have is 4 okay now let us move to the next one that is a rectangle lattice okay so this is a rectangular lattice okay so what are the basis vectors this is a vector 
this is b vector and the angle enclosed by them alpha that is 90. So if we go to see the lattice parameters we find a is not equals to b and we are well aware in rectangle adjacent sides are never equal but the angle enclosed between them is still 90 degree. So the genuine choice of unit cell is a rectangle. Now let us check the symmetry operations that exist here. So if this is one of the unit cell so we cannot have a fourfold rotation here right so we see for two fold rotation so two fold rotation exists at the vertices since you see this point can rotate to this one similarly this point can rotate to this point like that it exists midway as well like this and then we have mirrors these are your mirrors okay so the point groups corresponding to this are point groups will be so since it is a two fold rotation and two mirrors so it will be 2 mm and simply a mirror okay now let us move to next lattice that is the centered rectangle one A centered rectangle lattice okay so in the above lat rectangle lattice case this a is the shortest lattice translation vector so we have two lattice translation vectors and out of them shortest is the a since a mod is less than b one. Now for the centered rectangle one, let us have an arrangement of points. And a central point here. So this is a centered rectangular lattice. So in this case, the choice of the unit cell is a rectangle with a point in the center. So it is a doubly non-primitive unit cell. That is this unit cell contains two points all right now what are the basis vectors this a vector and the b vector and alpha is still 90 so the lattice parameters become A not equals to B and alpha equals to 90 degree. But here in this case, the shortest lattice translation vector is this. 
which is given by this is a vector plus b vector by 2 this is the shortest lattice translation vector okay now if we overlay the symmetry operators they are similar to the case that we just saw approximately so so let us overlay them so we have two fold rotation axes like this and then along the diagonals as well we have two fold rotation in this case so we have two fold rotations here as well so this is the two fold rotation two fold rotation two fold rotation also the mirror planes exist as such these are the mirror planes okay so the total symmetry is point group can be 2 m m and m okay so what is the centered rectangle a rectangle with a point in the center okay so as we see can we not have a rhombus as the unit cell if we see this is a rhombus so both rhombus and this rectangle has a symmetry of 2 mm and small rhombus is also smaller so it should have been the obvious choice but by convention we choose centered rectangle as the unit cell all right by convention okay and it is not necessary that the angle should be 120 or something this rhombus can be of any angle or general rhombus but still by convention unit cell is taken as centered rectangle now next is 120 degree rhombus lattice okay so 120 degree rhombus so this is the lattice okay this is your lattice so the unit cell will be this rhombus this is your unit cell what are the basis vectors now this a and this b and the included angle alpha is equals to 120 degrees so the lattice parameters that we see are a and b since it is a rhombus they are equal so a is equals to b and alpha equals to 120 degree but what about the shortest lattice translation vector shortest lattice translation vector is this one so this is your a vector plus b vector and this is the shortest lattice 
translation vector you see sum of two sides will always be greater than the third side so this is the shortest lattice translation vector now let us overlay the symmetry operators so we see this has a six fold symmetry how let us consider three unit cells this this and this so hence here we get a hexagon So these are our three unit cells and we have a hexagon here. So we see we have a six fold rotation at this vertex. Hence at every vertex as they become center of some or the other hexagons. So we have six fold rotations. okay then so this is a triply non primitive unit cell this is just to show the presence of six fold rotation okay now let us move back to one single unit cell where these mirrors exist along this diagonal and perpendicular to this diagonal so these are your mirrors and then you have these three fold rotations as well here and along with two fold rotations so the total point groups that can exist for this are six mm 6, 3m and 3 ok so when this 6 fold is absent this 3 fold is still present so 3m ok now we have last sorry we have 2 fold axes as well along these lines this has two fold here we have a two fold rotation axis since after 180 degree rotation this point can transform to this one clearly okay so we have one uh, two fold rotation as well so now let us come to the last one that is a parallelogram lattice now this is the most general kind or an oblique lattice ok so let us have an array so this is the array Okay, so this is the parallelogram array and here the unit cell is this parallelogram and the basis vector as well as the lattice translation vectors are this B vector, A vector and this alpha angle and they can be literally anything. This is the most general kind. A, B and alpha is equals to any general value ok so now the least symmetry that can exist here is two fold rotation how it exists 
So if suppose this is your unit cell and I have to show that here. So the two fold exists here and in the mid race. And sometimes that also doesn't exist. So point groups corresponding to this are twofold rotation or simply translation. Okay. So you see the rectangle lattice or the square lattice, they are just the special case or 120 degree rhombus. They are nothing more than special case of parallelogram. You see, if you fix this alpha to 90, you get rectangle. If you fix this to 120, you get rhombus. Okay, and the corresponding relations between A and B. Okay, so. Let us now summarize the 2D lattices. Okay, so we have the lattice type, the lattice parameters, shape of the unit cell. and the point group. So, let us create a table. Okay, so we have a first we saw was a square lattice with the lattice parameters being A equals to B and alpha equals to 90. The shape of the unit cell was a square and the point groups were 4 mm and 4. Second was rectangle A not equal to B and alpha equals to 90. Then the shape was rectangle and the point group symmetries were 2 mm and m. Third was centered rectangle. Lattice parameters A not equals to B and alpha equals to 90. Shape of the unit cell still being rectangle and the point group still being 2 mm and m. Okay. The fourth one was 120 degree rhombus. A equals to B and alpha equals to 120. Shape of the unit cell being a rhombus of 120 degree angle. And the point groups are 6 mm, 6 3m and 3 and the last was a parallelogram with lattice parameters having a general value and shape of the unit cell being a parallelogram a simple one and the point groups being 2 comma 1. So we see 2D lattices have a total of 10 point group symmetries. So we can conclude 2D lattices have 10 point group symmetries and correspondingly 17 space group symmetries. That takes us to the end of 2D lattices. Now, let us move to 
3D lattices that will ultimately lead us to the crystal systems or crystal structures that actually exist. Okay, so what are 3D lattices? So 3D lattices, as the name suggests, this is an arrangement of points arrangements of points along the three dimensions okay and these points will be infinite along the all the three dimensions so as to maintain the identical surroundings so what is the shape of 3d lattices a general unit cell shape is a parallelopipede. okay a general unit cell shape that is a parallelopipede or a rotated cuboid this is your parallel pipe suppose this is your origin so then this is your a vector this is your b vector and this is your c vector so these a comma b comma c are the three basis vectors that are required to generate a 3d lattice talking about the angle between them the angle opposite to vector a is alpha it is between vector b and c the angle opposite to vector b is beta that is the angle between vectors a and c and the angle opposite to the vector c is gamma that is the angle between the vectors a and b so we have a total of six lattice parameters out of which out of the six three define distances that is a b and c while the other three define the angles between them that is alpha beta and gamma okay so since each point has identical surroundings no matter at what point you look at the surroundings will remain identical so these distances and angles they can be independent or dependent okay now as per translation symmetry as per translational symmetry we can have 14 distinct arrangements of points in space. Now, these 14 distinct arrangements, these are termed as 14 Bravais lattices. They are really distinct from each other. Okay, so we have only 14 distinct arrangements based on the translation symmetry such that points when translated in 3D have 14 distinct arrangements. Now, based on other symmetries, like rotation 
mirror and inversion these 14 lattices can be grouped into seven crystal systems okay so we have 14 revi lattices based on the translational symmetry and these then can be grouped on the basis of rotation mirror and inversion symmetry operations into seven crystal systems okay here the crystal systems they are defined always by the symmetry and not by the shape of the unit cell the unit cell can be anything okay so we have seven crystal systems and correspondingly 14 brevi lattices an important point to note here is lattices have the highest symmetry lattices have the highest symmetry allowed for them Correspond corresponding to whatever group they exist in and the crystals that are made out of these lattices can have lower symmetries as well based on the symmetry of the motif so can have lower symmetries as well based on the symmetry of the motif okay so now let us look at the seven crystal systems and 14 brevi lattices This is very important topic. Okay, so let us start. So first is, let us first write down all the names of all the crystal systems. First is cubic, then tetragonal, then orthorhombic. Hexagonal, Trigonal, Monoclinic, and lastly, Triclinic. Okay. Now let us start with them one by one. So our first is cubic crystal so as the name suggests the shape of the unit cell is a cube so we make a lattice here a cubic lattice so to make the points we'll first make the unit cell So this is a cube. So we have points here. So this is the primitive type or the P type, simple cubic. Since it has only one point per unit 
cell. Okay. So this can occur as body centered and face centered as well. So let us draw those. So body center will be having a point in the center as well. So this is your body centered and then face centered is The face center has points on the centers of the faces. So this becomes your face centered. Okay. So this is your eye or the body center. And this is your F or the face center. Now the basis vectors for this cubic system are A vector, B vector, C vector, alpha equals to 90, beta equals to 90 and gamma equals to 90. So the lattice parameters become A equals to B equals to C and alpha equals to beta equals to gamma equals to 90 degrees okay and the characteristic symmetries of this are the presence of four threefold axes of rotation okay so what is P, what is I and what is F. So P has one point per unit cell. I or the body center has one plus one of the vertices and one of the body center. So equals to two points per unit cell. And F has four points per unit cell. And lastly, we have end center that has points and center that has points on two of the opposite faces that are shared by two unit cells. So it has one point corresponding to the points at the vertices plus two into half. So equals to two points per unit cell. So now let us move to the second crystal system that is tetragonal. So for tetragonal we have only primitive and body center. So the shape of the unit cell is when you elongate the cube along the C axis. So, so it results in a cuboid or a square prism. So this is your A, this is your B and this is your C. Alpha, Theta, Gamma. So A equals to B but it is not equal to C, it is a bit longer. And alpha equals to beta equals to gamma equals to 90 still exists. Okay. So here we have primitive and body center. And the characteristic symmetry for this one is the presence of one fold rotation axis okay so one is where the points are at the vertices this is the simple 
and pre or primitive when you have one point at the body center this becomes a body center so it has two types of lattices so next let us go to ortho rhombic ortho rhombic so here now you have a rectangular prism okay so this is a rectangular prism so the basis vectors will be this a vector b vector and c vector this alpha beta gamma so a is not equals to b and not equal to c none of the edges are equal but the angle still remain 90 degrees so in this case all the four type of lattices exist that is primitive body centered face centered and end centered by convention it is taken as a is the smallest and C is the longest edge. The characteristic symmetries for this are presence of three two-fold rotation axes. This is the characteristic symmetry. So we know how primitive body center and face center look like. Let us see what end centered looks like. So if this is the unit cell of your lattice, so the end center will have points on the vertices and points on two opposite faces so this is your end centered okay now the fourth one is hexagonal okay so it is a hexagonal prism but still the unit cell is a 120 degree rhombus prism but the unit cell is a 120 degree rhombic prism. So here we have only primitive kind of lattice. So let us draw. So if this is your hexagon. Okay. So this is your hexagon. So this is a really bad drawing. So you can discretize it into three rhombic prisms basically so how to make the discretization let us join the diagonals so 
so you can see we have three rhombic prisms now this is one prism this is second one and this is the third one so i'll mark with a different color so this is the third prism and this is the second one and this red one is the first one so let us make a rhombic unit cell so this is your rhombic unit cell in this hexagonal system so what shall be the basis vectors so this is your a vector this is your b vector and this middle axis is your c vector so the angle alpha this is beta and this is gamma so the relation between the lattice parameters is like a equals to b but not equals to c and alpha equals to beta equals to 90 but not equal to gamma gamma is equals to 120 degrees okay now the characteristic symmetry of hexagonal crystal system is the presence of one six fold rotational axis okay this is the characteristic symmetry let us move to trigonal crystal system trigonal this is also called as rhombohedron this is also called as rhombohedron in this case also only primitive kind of lattice exists only the primitive one so this is basically an equally equiangular and equilateral parallelopite this is a general parallelopite so let us make the unit cell this is a very much general in nature parallelopite so if this is a this is b and this is c alpha beta and gamma so a equals to b equals to c that is equilateral and alpha equals to beta equals to gamma but they are not equals to 90 degrees so they are equilateral that is equal size and equiangular parallelopite okay and the characteristic symmetry for this case is the presence of one three fold rotation axis okay this is basically generated by pulling the cube along one 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 direction so when you pull the cube along the one 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 direction you get trigonal or rhombohedral crystal system now next is monoclinic this exists in primitive and end centered type of lattice and end centered so the shape 
is a parallelogram prism. So the shape is a parallelogramic prism. Let us draw one. So this is your monoclinic structure where this is your A, B and C. So A is not equals to B and not equals to C and by convention we take A less than B less than C. And here you see alpha, this is alpha, this is beta and this is gamma. So alpha equals to beta equals to 90 but this is not equals to gamma. Okay. Okay, I made a mistake as per convention here. This axis is chosen as the B axis. This has to be remembered. So your angle they will change since this is now the C axis the angles will be this will be gamma and this will be beta. So here the lattice parameters will be like alpha equals to gamma equals to 90 and they are not equal to beta. Okay and the characteristic symmetry of monoclinics are presence of one two-fold rotation axis okay and the last crystal system that we have is triclinic this is the least symmetric one okay this is the least symmetric system Okay, and the unit cell is a general parallelopite only. With the axis being A, B and C and the containing angle alpha, beta, gamma. They are none of them are equal and can have any general value. It exists in only primitive type and the characteristic symmetry is the presence of one fold rotation axis okay so let us now summarize the 3d crystal systems and Brevi lattices. So, summary of 3D Brevi lattices and crystal systems. Okay, so let us take crystal system. shape of unit cell then the lattice parameters provide lattices that exist for a particular system the, and the characteristic symmetry and the point groups Okay, so we have, let us make a table out of this.
okay okay so let us now summarize first one we saw was cubic where the shape of the unit cell was a cube having the lattice parameters as a equals to b equals to c and alpha equals to beta equals to gamma equals to 90 degree the brevi lattices that existed were primitive body centered and face centered with the presence of four three fold rotations the corresponding point groups in increasing order of symmetry are 2 3 4 bar 3 m 2 by m 3 bar 4 3 2 and 4 by m 3 bar 2 by m next was tetragonal the unit cell shape was a square prism so a equals to b but not equals to c and alpha equals to beta equals to gamma equals to 90 the brevi lattices were primitive and body centered characteristic symmetry was the presence of one four fold rotation the point groups were 4 4 bar 4 by m 4 2 2 4 m m 4 bar 2 m 4 by m 2 by m 2 by m the third was orthorhombic The unit cell being a rectangular prism, hence the lattice parameters are A not equals to B not equals to C, but angle all being 90. In this case, all the four kinds of Brevi lattices exist that is, primitive, body centered, face centered, and end centered, and the characteristic symmetry being 3 two-fold rotation axis. The point group symmetries are 2, 2, 2, 2, M, M, 2 by M, 2 by M, 2 by M. Okay. The fourth one was hexagonal the unit cell was 120 degree rhombic prism and the lattice parameters a equals to b but not equals to c and alpha equals to beta equals to 90 and gamma equals to 120 only the primitive brevi lattices and presence of one six fold rotation the point groups are 6, 6 bar, 6 by m, 6, 2, 2, 6 m, m, 6 bar m, 2 and 6 by m, 2 by m, 2 by m. Next fifth one was trigonal or rhombohedral. It had two names. It was generated by pulling the cube aloft one, one, one direction. Its unit cell was a parallelopipe that was equiangular and equilateral. So, A equals to B equals to C and alpha equals to beta equals to gamma but not necessarily 90. Only primitive type of brevi lattice and one three fold rotation axis. 
द पॉइंट ग्रुप्स आर थ्री थ्री बार थ्री टू थ्री एन एंड थ्री बार टू बाय एन सिक्सथ वॉज मोनोक्लिनिक इट हैज पैरलोग्रामिक प्रिज्म एज अ यूनिट सेल वे ए नॉट इक्वल्स टू बी नॉट इक्वल्स टू सी एंड इट हैड अ यूनिक बी एक्सिस बी एक्सिस वॉज पॉइंटिंग अपवर्ड सो एंगल्स वर एल्फा इक्वल्स टू गामा इक्वल्स टू नाइन पी एंड नॉट इक्वल्स टू बीटा ओनली primitive and end center exists in monoclinic it has one two fold rotational axis the point group symmetries are 2 2 bar 2 by m and the last is the triclinic the least symmetric one with a general parallelopipedal unit cell Lattice parameters have no constraints. All of them are independent. And only primitive lattice and one pole rotation axis. The point groups are one and one bar. So we see we have seven crystal systems corresponding to three plus to five. Plus four, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. These we have fourteen bravai lattices, and a total of thirty-two point groups. Okay, so. Having thirty-two point groups and fourteen bravai lattices, we have seven crystal systems. Okay. Now, there are some important points that should be made clear. So, when we say end-centered cubic, what does this mean? So here. End centered is a type of lattice. Okay, end centered is a lattice. Cubic refers to the crystal system, and also cubic refers to the shape of the unit cell. So we have to clearly define what each term means. now cubic in itself can be interpreted in three different ways cubic in itself has three interpretations so one is it is a type of lattice based on translation second it is a type of crystal based on symmetries like rotation mirror inversion and next it is the shape of unit cell based on lattice parameter so we should always keep in mind in what context what term is being referred to <coughs> okay thank you